My name is Jen Cumberworth and I handle the education and community engagement here at the HALT Center. And today we are talking with Kim Whelan, who is our events manager. Um, thank you so much for doing this, Kim. We so appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you, Jen. Yeah, so we're going to go through a list of questions that I have here and then we'll address any questions um, from our attendees. Feel free to write anything in the Q&A or the chat. Um, and we'll get to those. So we're going to just dive right in, Kim. I want to hear all about what it is like to be the events manager at the HALT Center. Um, can you give us an idea of what your daily tasks are and kind of an overview of the work that you do? Sure. Well, I can start with it's definitely not boring. <laughs> which every day I come in here, it's something different, which is part of the joy. Um, trying to give this an, an idea of, a, of an A to Z from an event. A user group comes in, they rent the building, and then we start talking details and vision. So we, I mean, we rent things for weddings, performing arts, from ballet to rock shows. And so each, each one of these events are different. And again, that's the joy. So I take, after that it gets booked, I just talked to them about what is their vision? What space do they need? How many tables do they want? What kind of catering are you looking at? and then introduce them to the lovely team that we have here at the Holt Center based on what their needs are. So we've got, you know, our tech services people are just rock stars and they can make anything you want happen, lights, sound, music, video cameras. And then we have a food and beverage department that also is amazing. And they'll make sure that you have the beer, the wine you want. We work with different caterers in our local area. And so we take it from, from the A to the Z. So as soon as you, as soon as you book this, we make sure that you get everything in your vision you want. And then we roll with that actual event itself, which is the details are amazing. And then you get to the end and that's, I mean, I take it from A to Z. Wow. So you're like really the go between, between the, the show or event or program and everybody at the Halt Center. So you're kind of like yeah. everything. Um, so so starting from the beginning and you talk about you meet with the show and kind of find out their needs and connect them with the different people at the Halt Center. And then what does like a day of show kind of look like? Well, so uh, part of my process in the in the advancing of the show is to make sure that I have the timeline locked in for everybody. And I share that with with the user group and with our building. So it's, you know, when um, when we, when an event starts, who comes in at what time? When do we need security in? When do we need the stage crew in? What does custodial's day look like? So all of those little pieces line up. So when I first come in, I'm gonna make sure that the timeline's out and everybody's got their information. And they've, you know, even down to, do they have the parking spot they need when they pull in? So as soon as they arrive, we introduce them to the venue and introduce them to the right people and we get the ball rolling. So it really is like each event is a project, essentially, like your project managing each event, whether we're booking it or it's rental. Um, so on my questions, I have, you know, your daily tasks. So it's it's interesting to kind of get an interview or overview. Um, but then are there any like special unique projects? Like I know you're doing all of the coordination for each of the shows, but any other like special projects that you get to work on in this position? Yeah, are uh, event-based, is that what you're referring to? Yeah, sure, yeah, event-based, if there's anything, I don't, like, because I, I know that each event is, you know, its own special thing. I don't know if that would really apply to the work that you do, but any additional projects that you get to work on aside from all of the, the programs and shows that you do? Um, that's a good question. I um, There's so many details and so many things that happen that each, as I said, each one of these are so different. So you get to dive into the vision that the person has for theirs. And that could be just simply trying to, trying to locate somebody in town who does, who does what that person needs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, um, one of the things they, they wanted a, um, some sort of fake person to be standing on stage. So then I'm, you know, Googling and I'm looking around town to try to find, well, work within their vision, but also bring in this strange prop that they might need or running around and getting these, like somebody wants a specific flower. So I, I just love to focus on their details and to really hit, hit the nail on the head with what they want and they need. As far as like 
projects that I personally get to work on. Each each one of those is a project, but um, okay. I get to you know try to to streamline what happens in the building to make efficiencies in in our process. So that would be looking at different types of software and um, uh, getting out and networking with different people who do the similar sort of thing that I do and finding out oh would that work best for them and then get to bring and implement those kind of things into our procedures here at the whole center. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because you're doing so many different things. So trying to streamline, I'm sure, has its benefits and talking with others in the field and everything. Um, so you do everything. I mean, really, like you said, A to Z, it could be the most random thing, like finding, like you said, a mannequin or something. Yeah, yeah. some sort of flower. Um, so what would you say is your like favorite part of your job? Is it is it the idea that it is always changing or like what, what are your highlights, your job highlights? As I said before, it is each one of the different user groups and the people that come through here are a joy. And a lot of them have very, a lot of artistic qualities to them. And so just to, to hear what their vision is and to kind of get on board and help them create that within this environment is really special. I, um, I've met a lot of people and networked with a lot of people and just invested time, investing time and energy into making their event what they want it to be is, is very much a joy. So you seem, it seems like you have to be a really good people person to do this job. Yes. Would you say that that's like a, a like a skill that you, you should, that you should have if you're interested in this kind of work to be able to deal with all sorts of different people? Oh yeah, different walks of life, different visions, you bet. Being a people person and just also being, you know, a good listener. Part of part of that process is listening to what they need and they want while they're here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so on the flip side, what would the challenging parts of your job? What would you say are the most challenging parts? Well, I think I kind of touched base on that a little bit with the projects you referred to. The projects that are outside of creating those visions are more about how to streamline. And so those are the challenges. You want to make I mean as you know, as you gear up and your event season's happening and you're going to the now and the later constantly, that you want to make sure that things are streamlined and efficient as much as possible. And I'd say that is the ultimate challenge. Did yeah, because like in normal times when we were actually having shows, how many shows at one time would you be balancing? Well, gosh, we, I mean, we have two theaters here. We have the larger one and the little one. And then we also have a bunch of event spaces. So you could give, if we had something going on in each room and throughout a day, you could have up to six or seven different things going on and all of them having all of their details. Wow. Yeah. So do you <laughs> use any sort of system? Like you said, you, you know, you're looking at streamlining and stuff. Do you have any, are there programs that somebody in your position uses or do you have uh, your own personal system? I have both. Uh, as far as the whole center itself goes, we use USI, which is Ungerbach, which is widely used. And it's more of a, the way we utilize it is more of like an event booking and an event um, settlement sort of place. They do have, and not to, Ungerbach also has other different ways that also uh, can key into event planning, but we don't have that set up in there. So I create my own timelines, diagrams, those kind of things. And we use Visio is the other software that we use for creating maps throughout the building. So that oh, shows, okay. you know, when the tech services come in and they need to know where does this, where does this drum go? Where does this light, where do these lights go? How many mic inputs are coming in? And we can just simply get onto Visio and create a map for that. And the same for like a reception. If you need, you know, I need six tables, rounds of eight, and uh, and the bar is over here, and I need the water station here. Create a map so you can hand that off to to the people setting up the room, and it just you know, again, that's another efficiency. We have those are the two that we utilize, and then my own, I have a just my own timeline and notes as, as I go through things. Currently, I'm looking into trying to find a a checklist platform, and there's so many different things like that, so that everybody within the building would know, okay, as soon as I'm done, I check this off, and it speaks to all of us at the same time. That's currently, like you were saying, projects. That's something I'm in, interested in figuring out. Yeah, absolutely, and so I'm like thinking about this 
if you have like five or six different things happening in the building at once mm -hmm. in person. So how does, how do you manage those things day of? Is it really just um, like you said, kind of having every detail mapped out and then are you on site then generally for every event that you're managing? Not for all of them because you, you have to be, a, <laughs> but um, that, that initial communication with all of the notes and the things like that, that gets out, out to everybody. And then the advance, like we call it advancing where you're talking all the specifics with people and lining up your crew, who's going to be here that day and at what time. But um, a lot of them I am on, a, on site and most I'd say probably 99% of the time I'm on call. So if yeah. somebody changes, changes something throughout the day that I can make note of that and get the right people rolling or if they have an addition to their guest list or security list. So this is definitely not a nine to five job. No. Like, I'm just trying to give an idea <laughs> for those interested in event management. It is not a traditional nine to five job. Exactly. Um, which seems like something that you'd have to really like. But do you like the, the schedule kind of being different every single day? Yeah, again, like I said at the beginning, it's um, <laughs> day is different. You're not going to be bored. Which is awesome. That's very cool. So um, I know, so I guess my next question, my next question is talking about what the average salary is for this job. Um, and I know that that can be a wide range. So I, I, I don't know if you're able to kind of touch on like maybe where you would be at an entry level to the, the height of event management. And if you don't have that information, that's fine. But if you're able to offer kind of a, a range for somebody that's interested in going into this field, what the average salary would be. Well, um, of course you can always, you can Google this too, but in different places, it, you different places have different pay rates and, and it, it really varies. Like if you're in Vegas, baby, you've got all the kinds of, that's a whole different rate than being in Eugene, Oregon. And then we also work for uh, the city here. So that's a little bit different. We have different benefits and PERS and things along those lines. But the average is probably like 50 to 60. And a lot of people do it independent too. So that's another way of oh. the event. If you go as an independent, then you're setting the, you know, you're, you're setting those details and you're setting the costs, how much the event's going to cost versus how much the profit and loss are going to come. So it really does vary quite a bit, but I'd say 50 to 60. That's really helpful to know. And I didn't realize that people did it independently. Um, oh, yeah. And it goes into my next question, which is how does one get started in this career? So um, I'd love to get your input on that. So like whether it's um, if you need a college degree or any sort of specific training. And then maybe um, if you're able to touch on like the different pathways per se, like if you like you talk about somebody doing it independently or working for an organization. Um, yeah, if you're able to touch on the different career options in this field. Sure. I and mean, there's a lot of different pathways to take to this. It's um, there is degrees out there. You can get event planning degrees for sure. And you can definitely get degrees in, in business and things along those lines. And then I think just like hitting the ground running and being being hardworking and dedicated and ex expanding those horizons and working different events are definitely going to give you the, the boots on the ground feel you're going to need. Um, yeah, so you don't necessarily need the, the degree. It's more the experience. Yeah, and there is degree pathways, but I would say that experience is really going to it's going to get you further. And do you have any like recommendations um, of if somebody is interested in, in event planning, like ways to start? Or I know that obviously you do this for Performing Arts Center, but there are other places, whether it's a hotel or something like that. Do you have any suggestions of where one might start to kind of look into the event planning field or event managing field? Yeah, well, um, I can say I started with a very diverse background myself and it was I worked for a winery pouring wine I worked for a catering company pl helping plan their events and then I got more into wedding planning and those kind of things and then there's the then there's also the whole avenue that I haven't explored very much in my time but is vendor based you know so you could have um you know lots of like a wedding show for instance I've worked at before and you have tons of vendors there you just help with the planning specifics on that um, 
for me, the catering was really helpful. There's so yeah, many. Can you talk a little bit about, like, talk a little bit more about your career pathway and how you got to where you are right now? Wow. <laughs> I could, I Start from the beginning. Yeah. Um, so it, it's even to my childhood. My mom was a, a dance teacher and put on her own productions. So I helped with that quite a bit growing up. And then we. Amazing fashion shows and things along those lines. So <laughs> I did quite a bit of that growing up, just being that being that right arm to her and seeing all the details and being the energy of being a part of the show was also really engaging to me. And then in, in my own personal life, I ended up, as I said, working at a winery, which was also a 3000 person event space and also had tasting rooms and wedding and, and weddings. So um, I started out just pouring wine for them one summer and then ended up, you know, managing the tasting room and helping them run their events. So that was just a, a steady climb and a lots of lots of late nights and hard work, but really fun. And then the, the catering aspect, I did a lots of high end catering. So it would be, um, you know, huge banquets for 500 people and then working private events for, for um, you know, VIPs and such along those lines. It's really fun. That's amazing. So then how did you end up um, here at the Halt Center? So I was, I worked at a coffee shop also during college and the food and beverage manager at that time came through the coffee shop and he was like, you want to come and pour beer? We used to, uh, the outdoor theater, you want to come and pour beer? And I was like, sure, that sounds like fun. And then 20 years later, I'm still here. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So you started um, in the concessions area then? Yeah. Very cool. And then how long have you been in your current, um, your current role? Well, so it, I AI seed at first, meaning that I just worked as an acting capacity. So I've worked it about two years, but I got the position a couple months ago. Officially. Amazing. That's really, that's, it's always really wonderful. And I know we talked about this a little bit before um, this chat, but it's really cool to hear uh, people's pathways because nobody starts in the same spot and we're all kind of going different directions and then end up where you're at. It's always really nice to hear that and reassuring too, that you can kind of go different yeah. areas and you know, end up where you're at, which is awesome. Yeah. You can be working a coffee shop one day and you're 20 years later. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so if, uh, do you have any like advice for those that are interested in going into this field? Like anything that you've learned along the way that you wish that somebody had told you? <laughs> That's a good question. I, I think a desire for really strong customer service and that people person skill that you were talking about, if that's, if, you know, if that's what drives you, then, then definitely head this direction. Make sure you have a lot of energy too. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm sure doing all the different events and <laughs> dealing with all sorts of different people, I'm sure is, yeah. energy is key. Energy <laughs> but yes, customer key. service, absolutely. Um, and I guess my other question, I know in the beginning you were talking about um, you're, you kind of have these like meetings set up with each production that you do. Can you talk maybe a little bit more about those? Like how, like how many meetings do you have? I know you call it like advancing a show. Um, how many meetings do you traditionally have? And uh, maybe talking a little bit more about the, like the writer experience and like what if, I know you can't name specific things, but giving examples of some of this, because I always think that that stuff's super interesting. Like, I know we've touched a little bit about it, but a little bit on it, but hearing a little bit more specific examples, I think would be helpful. So I, I the process for the, the way we have it set up here is that booking will get information in, and that would include like a contact person and the writer that you speak to. And writers are for like, if you see a rock star writer, it's got exactly how many lights, exactly all the things that they're going to need while they're here. And the thing that I've, I, that I found the most interesting with a writer is that there's there's sometimes this quirky little thing that's put in there. And over the years, I've tried to figure out like, why is it that they need 10 pairs of gym socks <laughs> at each, each venue? Is that really what they need? Or 
three wooden hangers, you know, that's a specific one. And you know that you need it. You, you have to have these things or the, the cliche is the green, green jelly beans only, like a bowl of yeah. Beans. And so I've come to the conclusion, I'm not sure if this is accurate or not, but it's part, if they can walk into a venue and they see that you have actually gone and purchased the 10 pairs of gym socks or the three, you know, the three specific hangers or the, the bowl of green jelly beans, then they know, okay, then everything else is dialed in. These people actually read my specifics and they're, they're ready to host me. That's, that is, that's such an interesting way to look at I it. Know. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's how I take it. No, but I think that that makes so much sense. I feel like so many times, like you said, the lore of the rider, like people being so high maintenance or something, but that that actually makes a lot more sense to be like, oh, like that's- I don't think it's about the, the you know, the 10 pairs of gym socks, since I think it's about the whole picture. I'm yeah. Looking for. Like, oh, these people got me. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I like that way of looking at it too. It's like a much more positive <laughs> way of looking at it. And so we have a couple of questions. So it sounds like this position requires you to wear a lot of hats and keep track of a lot of different things. Um, what do you what do you do to stay organized and feel prepared for upcoming events? Well, so I touched a little bit about the systems and your own personal things, but are there any other, yeah, like personal track do you feel like confident that you're ready to go into an event <laughs> well um we you touched on what i do when i first get here and what i really like to do is to be the first person on site and so then i go back through my notes and i just refresh myself and i make sure that all the you know everything's prepared and then the crew starts coming in and then then you hit the you know hit the ground running for me personally those few minutes of just organization and before everything starts are really key yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You don't want to be here after everybody else has gotten here. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Um, this other question is, do you have any specific performances that were particularly exciting to work on and be a part of? Um, all of them, but uh, let me think. There's a, I, I think all of them. There's that feeling of, being a part of somebody else's vision, like, or even in the performing arts hall, like hearing somebody warm up and you know, you know where, you know where this is headed. This is headed to 2,500 people coming in the hall and having a great experience. And so again, I guess it's, I'm talking again, that, that kind of quiet moment, maybe just during a rehearsal or something along those lines to be a specific show. I mean, when, if you have a moment to step away and to go and you know step out into the front of the hall and experience the performance itself. I think that's another one of those quiet moments that, that you're like, yeah, it all came together and it looks great. These people, 2,500 people are experiencing this with me. And I'd say one of my favorite moments was Yo-Yo Ma, that I felt that like this entire thing came together. All these people are experiencing the same thing at me, with, with me at the same time. And it was beautiful. That's amazing. And like, you have to take such pride in that to be like, I orchestrated these, well, make sure that it all happens. Yeah. And it takes, it takes so many people and the, the artists themselves are just amazing. So it takes so many things to have that all come together and just have it look and be seamless like that when you get that moment. Yeah. So that leads me to my next question, which is when do you feel done? Like, when are you like, <laughs> I'm, done well um so my boss jeff he he has this and i don't know if you can see my paper let me see if i can do it really quickly these are terrible drawings but work with me here so you've got where the truck comes in right yes and it's all these things in between to make that happen and it's when the truck pulls away so and when, then that's when you're like, it's like, okay, but then it's also on to the next because it's all about now and later because you're already planning for the next four or five things that are coming and the next month and a half. And then, but you do have that, you know, there's that one moment, the truck pulls away that went well, great. Okay. On to the next. On um, to the next. So you don't ever get a break. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, that is really satisfying. helpful. 
yeah, for sure. To know that like it was a success and on to the next one for sure. Um, so I'm going to say if we have any other questions in here, um, I think this is all really helpful to hear the overview and also know where you like what you were doing before leading up to this. I think I knew that you worked at a winery, but I didn't realize that you did like large events like weddings and everything prior to coming here, which is, um, that's just interesting to hear that pathway. Um, if we have any other questions, do you have any, have any other thoughts or things that you'd like to share? Um, not that I can think of. I'm, I, yeah, I really, thanks for asking me the questions and I enjoyed the time. I, yeah, I, absolutely. This was so helpful. We're so appreciative of it. And, um, as always, if you're watching this later on YouTube, feel free to reach out to our education team. If you have any questions about anything, we're always here to answer. So yeah, this will be on our YouTube page. And um, yeah, Kim, this was really great and so helpful to hear the overview of everything. You do so much <laughs> and it's truly- It very takes a team. Yeah, it does. But I mean, seriously, it takes a certain kind of person to be able to manage all the projects and managing the people. That's a lot of coordination and it's really, it's really, you know, impressive and really interesting to hear about. So I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. And yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks, Jen. Okay, bye. bye.